Hi guys, welcome back to The Crafty Author. Today we are going to make a car seat poncho. So I made this uh, poncho and I posted it on uh, Facebook, just a photo, and I've had several questions on how to make this. So I'm going to show you how I do this. Um, there are many ways to do it. Um, lots of YouTubers do this and they'll show you their different techniques. This is just mine. So this is what the poncho looks like. Like that. It's got the little hood. And what's really cool about this one is that it is reversible. So you can wear it either way. This one is fleece and flannel. As you can see, I'm struggling to hold it up, but that's what it looks like. And now we're gonna get started and I'm gonna show you how I, how I made this. So today we're gonna be making a car seat poncho for my grandson who is going to be going to Disney on Ice. And uh, my daughter wanted him to have something Disney-like that's cool to wear. So since he's not quite two years old, I went ahead and picked up this uh, Olaf from Frozen fabric at Joann's and it's just cotton. This is 100% cotton. And then I got some fleece to match it. So this is what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna show you how to make this. Now, these are fairly simple, can be a little time consuming, um, depending on your skill level with sewing. So, um, I just kind of made this pattern up, but in order to get the measurements, so I'm gonna show you here. Now, I've already measured my grandson's neck and I've measured the uh, from his neck to his knees how long the poncho should be and for him, it's 19 and a half inches. And then I will show you how I took the measurements for the shirt, for the uh, neck opening. But what you wanna do, and I'm just using a t-shirt, my husband's t-shirt, you want to take a t-shirt of your little one or whoever you're making the poncho for, okay? You wanna fold it in half and then you're going to place it on the quarter fold and measure how far that is on your quarter fold and you'll cut and that will make your neck hole, okay? That's how you do that one. Then, if you're gonna put a hoodie on it, you don't have to, but if you wanna put a hood on this, let me take the hanger out. Again, all you're going to do is you're going to take the sweatshirt and you're going to fold it in half. You're going to fold, you wanna make sure your hood is folded in half like this, okay? And then you'll just lay it down on two pieces of fabric, like such, and you'll just cut around and it'll give you the size of how big your hood should be. Okay? So that's how you measure that. Fold it in half. You will have to sew the two pieces together on the hood. So I'm gonna show you how to do this and how to make a reversible poncho. Apologize for not having all my patterns and stuff here in place. I'm gonna turn my light on so hopefully you can see better. Okay. So first I'm gonna cut out the fleece. Move this stuff out the way. Right. And today my husband is videoing us and so it'll make be a little easier to follow along and see what I'm doing. So if you hear me talking to somebody else, that's who I'm talking to. It's my husband. So I purchased one and a half yards of the fleece. Actually, I purchased one and a half yards of both fabrics. I like to purchase more because I typically find that I make mistakes when I'm sewing. It's just me. Um, I'm not really a garment sewer. I'm more of a quilter, as you know. So <laughs> these projects can be a little tedious for myself. So what you wanna do is you wanna fold, make sure that your fleece is folded 
fold it in half and then fold it over. So you should have four pieces, four layers right here. One, two, three, four. And you wanna make sure that these are together and that this side is where you can see those four layers open like that, okay? Because you're gonna cut on the fold to make your poncho. You're going to need a rotary cutter. You are going to need straight pins. You are going to need probably some scissors. You're going to need a ruler or a tape measure of sorts. Um, you will need fleece. You will need another piece of fleece or you will need cotton or whatever you're gonna use on the outside of it. Uh, you'll need a sewing machine. You will need matching thread. And uh, if you have little quilt clips, those work really, really well. When I'm talking about quilt clips, I'm talking about these little boogers right here. These are awesome. And they come in really handy for the end of the project, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started right now. And I wanna do this as quick as we can. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up here at the neck. Now I already know that I need to do about four and a half inches, okay? So I'm just gonna move my ruler up. There's a little easier way to do this, folks, but I have to do this the hard way. So, let's see, that's about, yeah, we're gonna move it down just a little. I'm gonna make mine just a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna come right to here for the neck and I'm just gonna stick a pin in there. Now, if it's a little bigger, I'm okay with that. He can grow into this. So now I'm gonna use that pin as my mark to mark down the 19 inches that I need to go. And I'm trying to remember, yeah, I think it's this way that I wanna do this. No, it's the other way. Okay, so I'm gonna find 19 and a half inches right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stick a pin right there at that 19 and a half inch mark. I know it's a little over, it's okay. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. This is just gonna help me to cut my rounded edge. So now I wanna keep my ruler there and I'm just gonna move it like so. And again, we're just gonna kind of give this a little pin right there. And we're gonna just go and we're gonna make sure that we pin over here. And then we're gonna do the same thing this way. Now, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask me down in the comment section. I am happy to answer your questions. I know this can be a little bit tricky, but I promise you it turns out absolutely adorable. I've already made four of these. They take haven't taken me too long to do. And now we're done, okay? We're done pinning that. So, I will say that I have tried to cut my cotton fabric at the same time as cutting this fabric, I thought maybe I could keep it even. It's really a bad idea because there's so many layers that you have to cut through that it just, you end up getting really jagged edges and it just looks goofy. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here oh, and sorry. I'm going to take, sorry guys, I know it was crazy. I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut along the curve that I have created. I should have mentioned you're gonna need a cutting mount. So you'll need a cutting mount <laughs> so you can do this. But anytime you're messing with a rotary cutter, you should be using a cutting mount. Okay, so here I need to make, and it looks like here, and I 
right there. Not too shabby. Okay, so those two things are done. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead. You always wanna measure twice and cut it once. So I'm going to measure where my pen is here. And that is six, it's about six. You're gonna just go ahead and you're gonna cut a circle there, okay? And there's your neck hole. All right, so now we're done with this piece. Next, you're gonna just set your fleece aside for right now. You wanna get your big pieces cut out first, okay? So, we're gonna repeat this process. That edge was just really, really jagged. You've already got the start of your poncho, okay? So this is one piece of the poncho. So we can get started. We're gonna just kind of follow our, our guide with the pins. Now, like I said, don't be worried about this salvage part. But you wanna make sure you're cutting in a voila. So now we have the second part of our poncho. Now we're going to work on the hood. Okay. So the hood, <laughs> the hood is actually my favorite part. You don't need a whole lot. You're going to just need two pieces. Okay. So what I like to do now, since I, I just made a, a pattern so that I could do this without using the hoodie all the time. So I just trace the shape of the hoodie onto some cardstock, and then I just use that as my, my thing. You can use scissors to cut this out. I prefer using my rotary cutter because it gives a cleaner cut. Okay. And then I just leave a little bit here. And now I've got my hoodie cut out. It is locked. I don't know why that works unlocked. Oh, thank you. And now we're going to do the same thing with our Olaf fabric. Sure we're going to be so good on this. Okay, so now we are ready to sew these two pieces together. So what you wanna do is you want to sew right sides together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that one down, put them together. So now you should have your ugly sides looking up, okay? Then we're gonna go sew this, pop a couple pins. I normally don't pin, but I will do it for sake of this just so I can show you what we're going to do here what we're going to do is we are going to sew from here around this top part down you're going to not sew this bottom part or the open face part you want to leave that open and you want the bottom to be open okay it's going to be the same way with the fleece now this fleece it looks like it has right and wrong sides so but. You know, with that one you're just gonna sew around this curve just gonna pin 
And that's the heater that you're hearing in the background because it is freezing in this craft room today. So again, we're just gonna take it. We're gonna sew down. The bottom part stays open and so does the part that shows your face that's open. I'm gonna just use my walking foot as a guide for the, uh, along the edge here. I like to do a little back stitch, but I'm just gonna sew along this edge. Okay, now it's getting kinda wonky, so I just pick up my foot a little bit. And because I'm going on a circle, that's why the, the fabric puckers just a tad. Take your time and go slow. As a matter of fact, you should probably put that speed Okay. And back stitch. All right, so we have one part finished. And uh, so after I finish doing sewing it, I like to go around and I like to cut around because this is gonna help it to lay down better when I sew the two pieces. So uh, about a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth, I don't know. I'm just eyeballing it, so I'm not like particular in the measurement. I just know I don't want to cut the seam that I just created. And I'm super excited because we're doing this on my brand new Janome 9400 QCP machine that I got for Christmas. And she sews beautifully. So, but you can do this on any machine, because I have. All right, so then you're gonna just flip it open, like so, okay? And just push it out. And you have your Olaf hood started, or whatever you're making. And you see how cute that is. It's adorable. your little hood out and then what we're going to do next is we're going to put these we're going to put it like this so we're going to put the back like that and the fronts are going to face each other only we're going to turn this one inside out and you want whichever fabric to be the most dominant you'll put it on the uh, on the top so you want nice sides facing each other, okay? You wanna make sure that the seam lines up. Okay, this is where the clips come in a little bit handy. I'm gonna pin this one just for right now. I pray that I don't stab myself And you gotta work with this a little bit, okay? You gotta there we go. Okay. So like I said, you just gotta work with it just a tad. And that's all. And then 
once you get it in there, you can enable it a tad. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew along this curve around the front. So your hood should look like this. When you open it from the front, you're gonna to want to sew all along that front curve. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've pushed my fleece back into my hood. Now I've got Olaf showing. Um, I'm getting ready to do a top stitch around the front so that it will lay really nice and it will look really professional. So again, I'm just gonna use my foot as my guide here. Okay. Take a couple stitches back and I'm just gonna top stitch. this little hood. And I want to make sure I don't have any wrinkles in this while I'm doing this part. There's a tendency to pucker just a tad because of the seams there. So now I've got that straightened out. There we go. So now that I have top stitched this, I have given it a more professional look around the hood. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. And now we're ready to move on to our ponchos. Okay. Now we're ready to put the two ponchos together. So got my one, my fleece part of my poncho put down. And now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to turn this one inside out like this because I want Olaf to be on the outside of this. Okay. And this is where your pins or your little clips come in handy so that you can just clip it where you know that it's right there. The seams are kind of even gonna line that that line up with right here this line on the poncho side it's not probably going to be 100% even but that's okay because in the end we're gonna fix that come on come on baby I just needed to get some bulk in there. Okay, so there we have it. What you're going to do is you're going to, you wanna pull up, you wanna make sure that you can see the side that you're gonna do, okay? So you wanna have this, your fleece fabric up and your, whatever your other fabric is, you wanna have those right here where you can see them pretty well. You're going to take your hood and you're going to put the this rough side, you're going to put it up against here. We're going to put your hood, we're going to just drop it in between these two. You're going to drop that. 
the inside of there. Now your the fabric that you have, the outer fabric on your hood needs to match up with the outer fabric on your poncho. So you want to find that seam that we were looking at before and you want to line that up. Then you want to take the inside fleece part and you want to line it up with the fleece portion of your that little hoodie part. So the fleece part that's on your hood and the cotton part that's on the, the other fabric. You want to make sure that they're all lined up. You want to pin it or you want to clip it. And I like to put two right there so that I know what I'm doing. And then you're just going to go along the rest. I'll actually do the other seam part. So again, you're going to take this portion of your hoodie or your hood, you're going to line it up on that seam and then you're going to take the fleece part of your hood and then you're just going to match them up. Okay. You may have to play with it to get it. Don't rush through it. It does take a little bit of patience and a little bit of time to get that on there. And then you can start pinning or clipping the rest of it together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish doing that. And I do recommend clipping or pinning. Don't just try to eyeball this. It's, you'll end up messing something. And then you won't be happy. So you should be having four layers of fabric right here. Okay? Four layers at this point. And you're going to sew those. So the hood is in, the hood is ready to be sewn, and we also need to do it around the other edge. Now there's only two pieces here. So this one is fairly easy to clip down. You're just gonna match up the, the ends. So now we're ready to sew. Now, I'm going to do it <laughs> the hard way around my uh, sewing machine without putting it up on the table. So make sure that your sewing machine is set up a little bit better than what I've got mine here right now. It'll make your life easier. I'm going to start right here on the front, needle down. Again, I'm just using my foot as the guide for right now. Okay. And I'm 
just sewing this around. Now we're gonna flip our poncho. It's gonna look weird when you pull it out, okay? It's gonna look real strange. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it to this side. You're gonna find the hoodie, and then you're gonna take that piece of fleece, and you're going to push it in. Push it in. Don't think you did anything wrong, you didn't. Just you can also stick your hand in here and pull it through, which might be a little easier to do. Yeah. All right, so we're starting to get a poncho here. See that we've got the hood on, it's attached. Now we need to pull this down and we need to straighten this out. You might be asking, well, how do we finish off the bottom? You're going to want to get this as flat as you possibly can. So now all you're going to do is you're going to need, this is when you're going to need your clips, you're going to need your pins. You're going to take your bottom layer and you're going to fold and then you're going to take, so you're just going to take the top and you're going to fold it under and then you're going to take your fleece and you're going to fold it under and you're going to clip it. And you will do this, can you see? Mm -hmm. Just folding under. You're gonna do this all the way around. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing this and then I will show you how we sew this on the sewing machine and then we'll be done. Okay, we're back and I have gone ahead and I have clipped all the way around the poncho. So as you can see now, there's a nice side on that side and a nice side here. Now we're just gonna go and we're gonna put it on the sewing machine. Now, my machine has a quarter inch setting, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it to that. But you would want to use your quarter inch foot as your guide as you went along the bottom here. my needle placed and I'm just going to start stitching and then I'm going to back stitch because I want to lock it in. And I'm just going to start sewing all the way around. And I'm just going to continue all the way around here until I'm finished. And then when I'm done, I'll come back on and show you what it looks like. Okay, our little car seat poncho is now done. I went ahead and top stitched around. And it's also reversible. So you could always turn it inside out. You can wear it like this as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I am at The Crafty Author. I also have a blog. It's craftyauthor.com. And uh, keep on crafting.